Okay, this is exam two for fall 2015, physics 101. Uh, first question, uh, projectile is fired at 25 degrees above the horizontal. At the highest point in its trajectory, its speed is 100 meters per second. The air resistance is ignored. The initial velocity has a horizontal component of which of these? Well, remember, our object is following a path. It looks like this. It's a parabola. Um, my initial velocity in the x direction remains constant throughout. So if at the top of the trajectory, the speed is 100 meters per second. Oh, and then also, rather, I'm sorry, the velocity in the y direction gets smaller. It goes to zero at the top, and then it begins to increase in the negative x, in the negative y direction. Uh, so at the top of the trajectory, all we have is the x component of the velocity. We have no y component of the velocity. So the initial velocity then had a horizontal component of 100 meters per second. That's unchanging throughout the entire uh, flight of the ball. All right. Nickel soccer player kicks ball at an initial speed of 20 meters per second, which happens to be 50 miles an hour. At some angle from the horizontal, we don't know the angle, ball travels a horizontal distance of 39.5 meters in 2.58 seconds. What is the maximum height of the ball? Okay. This is a difficult question. There are lots of different parts to this, so bear with me. We have a path like this. I want to know what is this. Now, I know the time here. The time is uh, 2.58 divided by 2. So I know that it takes 2.58 seconds uh, to travel the entire distance. So I have 1.29 seconds here. At this point, it's 2.58 seconds. Okay, but I don't know this angle, theta. I do know the initial velocity, which is 20 meters per second. So um, what I need to do is figure out what is this angle first. And I can do that by looking at the x motion. I know that x is equal to vx times t. x is equal to v naught cosine theta times t. x is uh, 39.5, 20 cosine theta times t, which is 2.58 seconds. And then I solve that for theta. Let's see, that's 39.5 divided by 20, which is 1.975 divided by 2.58. And then I take the inverse cosine, so it's going to be the inverse cosine of 0 0.76550.39. I'm not going to write all the digits there. Uh, inverse cosine of that is 40 degrees. So I find that theta is equal to 40 degrees. Um, then I, um, now that I know theta, and I know the time that it occurs here, it's pretty easy to find the maximum height. I just say y is equal to v naught y times t plus one half a t squared. And since I'm looking for the position here, I use this time. Uh, v naught y now is going to be 20 meters per second times the sine of 40 degrees times t, which was 1.29 uh, plus one half of negative 10 meters per second squared times t squared, which is 1.29 seconds squared. And then I get 20 sine of 40. That's uh, 1.29 get negative uh, let's see no I'm sorry let me redo this this is 0. 0.8292 Minus 5 times 1.29. Hold on just a second. Okay, sorry about that. I had a little mistake here. Uh, this is actually 20 times sine 40 times 1.29 is 16.6 .6 
minus 8.32 uh, and that's equal to 8.26 meters let's see I had some sig fig uh, the way I calculated it was a little bit different so when you your test will be a little bit different have 8.26 that was problem number two um, so difficult problem, several steps there, but it's still a basic projectile motion problem. Uh, probably the most difficult question on this test. All right, spring-loaded gun shoots a ball in the horizontal direction from a height of 20 meters. The ball travels three meters. What is its initial velocity? All right, hopefully this one was really easy for you. I have this ball that comes off. It goes like that, just like we did in lab, just like we did a bunch of times in class. Uh, I first want to find the time, so I consider the Y motion. It's going to be one half a t squared. Remember, v naught y is zero here because v naught is only in the x direction. It has no y component, so I leave off that v naught t term. Uh, y is 20 meters. It's actually negative 20 meters equals one half of negative 10 times t squared. So that's uh, t is equal to two seconds. It's actually going to be 2.00 seconds, uh, and then the ball travels three meters. And so if I want to know the initial velocity, the initial velocity is only in the x direction. It's going to equal to the x displacement over the total time. The x displacement was 3 meters over 2 seconds. Actually, keeping proper sig figs, it's going to be 1.5 meters per second. So B is the right answer there for number 3. Uh, for two-dimensional motion of a projectile, all the following apply except which of these. All right, the maximum hurt height occurs at the midpoint of the flight. That's correct. The time of flight to the half the maximum height is equal to one quarter the total time of flight. Uh, let's come back. That might not be correct. So we'll come back. We'll just look at the others. The path is a parabola. That is correct. And the maximum range occurs when the launch angle is 45 degrees. Now let's look at this, this uh, idea. So I have this. What this is saying is that the time of flight to half the maximum right here is equal to one quarter the total time of flight. So it's saying that I have a quarter of the time here, a quarter of the time to, to go from here to here, and then a quarter of the time to go from here to here, and then there to there. Uh, that is not correct. In fact, if we look at our y versus t plot, remember our y versus t, it starts out with a big positive slope, it looks like this. In fact, we see that it flattens out. So you actually tra travel a shorter y distance in that second quarter of time than you do in the first quarter of time. All right. Uh, you could have reasoned that out, but you probably could have just looked A, C, and D are all obviously correct. So B is the only really the one that, that's, la that's left. All right. Stone is thrown horizontally and follows the path X, Y, Z. Uh, the direction of the velocity of the stone at point Y is shown by which of the vectors A through E. All right, well, I'm looking for the velocity. Uh, the velocity vector starts like this. The X component remains the same, but remember that we start to add these Y components. So when it gets here, it has a direction in that direction. That's going to be B for number five. Pause, I'll come right back to six. All right, a basketball is shot from a free throw range. At the top of the basketball's trajectory, its acceleration is which of these? Uh, more than the acceleration due to gravity? No. Unknown, more information? No, we know what it is. Less than the acceleration, it's equal to the acceleration at the top. In fact, when we talk about projectile, its acceleration is always in the y direction, equal to negative 10. Its acceleration in the x direction is always zero. That doesn't change. A pilot drops a package of food and water supplies from a plane. Uh, that is flying horizontally at constant speed. When the package reaches the ground, the plane's horizontal position relative to the package is directly above the package. So here we have this plane that's traveling, and our plane is traveling along in this direction. It drops a package. That package follows a path like that. At every instant, the plane is directly above the package. So seven is C. Eight. Two shells are fired simultaneously from the same battleship with two targets. The shells follow the trajectory shown here. Which target will be hit first? The one that travels the shorter Y distance. So this one is hit first. Even though it's a further distance away, uh, it's in the air for less amount of time. 
So uh, either it was shot at a more favorable angle, like at 45 degrees, and it had a greater X component of velocity, or it was just given uh, a greater velocity. So target one is hit first. Object is moving at constant velocity, which statement is always true. Uh, it's always true if it's at constant velocity, that means the acceleration is zero, that the net force is also zero. Uh, not C, not B, uh, not A, the net force is zero. Uh, an object is dropped out of an airplane, it falls and eventually reaches a constant speed, that means the acceleration is equal to zero. Uh, after the object reaches terminal velocity, which of the following statements is true? If I have this object that's falling with an acceleration equal to zero, it has the weight acting on it. It also has the force due to the air resistance. And those have to be equal if the acceleration is, is uh, zero. So let's see, the force of the air resistance is zero. That's not true. It has to actually be equal to the weight. The acceleration is equal to G. Now, we've already said that it's at constant speed. Uh, C is the right answer, and there are forces acting on it. The fact that a dime pulls upward on the earth with a force equal to the weight of the dime is Newton's third law. 80 kilogram person falls out on an airplane and eventually reaches maximum um, speed or terminal velocity. We estimate the force of air friction at this speed to be which of these? Okay, well, we just did this right. So our force weight here is 80 kilograms. It's going to be 800 newtons is how much this person weighs. And so if he's caught falling, at maximum speed, uh, at zero acceleration, then the air resistance has to equal 800 newtons. Two objects, A and B, experience the same net force. Object A accelerates at twice the rate of object B. Therefore, if object A accelerates at twice the rate, where F is equal to MA, uh, it has twice that, so it must have half the mass. So the mass of A is half that of mass of B. Block of one kilogram sits on the floor. Force of five newtons required to move the block. What is the coefficient of static friction? I have a force weight here equal to 50 newtons. That means that the normal force is also 50 newtons because it's just sitting on a horizontal surface. Uh, and I have to apply a force in this direction of five newtons. That means that the static frictional force is also five newtons uh, because that's the force that was required to get it moving to overcome that static frictional force. And so I say the static frictional force is equal to mu s times the normal force, so mu s is f s over f n. That's going to be 5 over 50, 1 over 10, that's 0.1 a is the right answer, and there are no units on that. Uh, 500 newton force is required to accelerate a car from rest at 3.9 meters per second in 12 seconds. We estimate the mass of the car to be what? Oh, well, first we need to find the acceleration. It goes from 0 to 3.9 meters per second in 12 seconds. We're just working this equation right here, V equals V naught plus AT, and solving that for A. So that is, uh, I'm sorry, I got these switched. It should be 3.9 minus zero over 12. And so that gives me my acceleration of 0.325 meters per second squared. Uh, we Then if I want to estimate the mass, I know I have 500 newton force, that's F equals MA. 500 over 0.3 is uh, 1,500, right? Yeah, 1,500. A woman who weighs 700 newton steps onto a scale that's in an elevator. The elevator begins to accelerate up or down, we don't know. Uh, the woman now weighs 500 newtons according to the scale. Well, we do know that if she appears to weigh less, that means that it must be accelerating down. So I can get a, rid of these two, and, but now it's just a matter of uh, what, at what rate is she accelerating down. So here's our elevator. Remember, the, the apparent weight or the weight that you appear to, to weigh is just really the normal force. Uh, that's what a bathroom scale measures, remember, is the normal force. This is our force weight. We just say the sum of the forces equals MA. That's FN minus FW equals mass times acceleration. Uh, 500 minus 700 equals her mass is 70 kilograms to be a weight of 700 newtons. So it's 70 times A. So it's going to be negative 200 over 70. 
is uh, 2.9 down. It actually is uh, negative 2.9, which we already know that. We know it's down. 5 kilogram mass is pulled up a smooth incline at a constant speed by a rope. The rope is parallel with the surface of the incline. If the incline is 50 degrees relative to the horizontal extension, the rope is which of these? Right, I'm going to do this the quick way, and hopefully you did it the quick way, where you don't really have to think about it very much. Uh, and then I can break it down a little bit more. So there's my object. I'm going to go ahead and write my normal force. I'm going to go ahead and write this as my x component of the weight. I know that this angle is 50 degrees, so this is Fw cosine of 90 minus 50, or 40. I know that this is Fw sine of 40. And I know that this is that force. I'm just going to call it F. It's the, the rope. The rope that the force that the rope is applying. And I just want to know the tension in the rope. Well, look, I know that this force has to equal this force. So I say F is equal to force weight cosine 40. Uh, this was a 5 kilogram mass, so it's 50 cosine 40. That's 38 newtons. All right, now look. You might have done this a little more slowly, and that's okay, although you really need to be pretty quick at this to finish the test in time. It needs to come sort of second nature to you. But let me just work it through uh, as you're still learning uh, more slowly. This angle is 40 degrees. This is my block. Uh, I'm going to label all my forces. I have my weight here. I have my force that's being applied by the rope here. I have the normal force here, and then uh, that's it. Now I'm going to draw my coordinate system. That'll be my x-axis, and that'll be my y-axis. Um, yeah. Uh, now, if this angle is 40 degrees, that means that this angle has to be 50 degrees. Now I can draw that on a on a coordinate on a redraw this and my normal force F in. I have my force F here. I can have F W 50 degrees. Now I want to redraw those in their x and y components. This is fwx, that's fw cosine of 50. This is fw sine of 50. And then I apply Newton's second law. Newton's second law says that the sum of the forces in the x direction is equal to max. I'm not going to worry about the y direction because I don't really need to know it. Uh, and I also recognize that it's moving up at a constant speed. So this term goes to zero. So I just have the sum of the forces in the x direction is 0. That's F minus Fw cosine 50 equals 0. So F is equal to Fw cosine 50. All right. But, you know, you really got to know that you just really got to be able to look at this and say, well, I can resolve this force into its x and y components, and this force is going to equal the x component of that force. You really need to have the incline plane down to be able to look at it and do that very quickly. All right, consider this figure. The block is stationary, static friction is holding on the plane. Which of the following equations is correct? Well, I can draw my normal force here. I know my weight is here. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my x and y components, actually, instead of drawing my weight like that. Actually, let's go ahead and do a... Uh, coordinate system, and we always draw our y-axis like that. We always draw our x-axis like that. X-axis is always parallel to the plane. This is my force weight cosine of 60. This is Fw sine of 60. And then this is going to be my static frictional force. Remember, this thing has a tendency to move in this direction. Now, it's not moving. It's stationary. But the static frictional force is going to be opposite the direction that the object would tend to move. And so it's going to be up the inclined plane. Now, let's see what I got here. I got Fw cosine 60 minus Fs. That says this 
minus this is equal to zero. Hey, that's correct. Fw minus Fn. Uh, no, Fn is related to this Fw sine 60, so that is not correct. Fw cosine 60 equals max. Look, I'm looking at the x-axis, but I see no mention of my static frictional force, so that's no good. And then Fw sine 60 is equal to Fn. That's equating these two forces. That is correct. So it looks like 1 and 4. A is the right answer. Uh, 8 kilogram mass is pulled across a smooth floor using a rope. The rope makes an angle of 28 degrees with the floor. Uh, the tension in the rope is 45 newtons. This is an 8 kilogram mass. I just want to know the acceleration. Well, we know that it's moving in this direction because it says that it's moving in that direction. So we really just need to know what is this force. And this is going to be 45 cosine of 28. That's just the x component of the, the force that's being applied. And so this is my fx. Fx is equal to max, uh, 45 cosine 28 divided by 8 kilograms. That'll give us our acceleration. And that's 5 meters per second squared. A is the right answer. Number 19. I mean, excuse me, is uh, B. It's uh, five meters per second squared, which is answer B. And a 5.5 kilogram object moving at constant velocity is acted on by three forces. Let's go ahead and draw a coordinate system here. One of those forces is 20 newtons along the x-axis. Another force is 25 newtons along the y-axis. What is the third force? All right. The magnitude of the first third force. It's pretty straightforward. I just need to realize that my third force, I'll call it F3, is going to be in this direction. It's going to equal the uh, the magnitudes of these two forces. Uh, or I can think of it as just being the opposite. If I were to add these two forces up, 20 and 25 newtons, it's going to be the opposite of that force. All right, so I can find that force is just 20 squared plus 25 squared. I get 32 newtons, so C is the right answer. 32 for number 20. Consider a block that is at rest on an inclined plane. The only forces are the friction, normal, and gravitational forces. Which of these statements best describe the normal force acting on the block? All right, well, as we've seen already, you know, the normal force right here is equal to Fw sine 60. So the normal force is less than the weight, B. Two kilogram object is moving at three meters per second. Uh, four Newton force is applied in the direction of motion and then removed after the object travel an additional five meters. So four Newtons over five meters, the work is just F times D, four Newtons. 5 meters, 20 joules. D is the right answer. Car travels distance x and acceleration at A does work W. If it travels a distance twice that with the same acceleration, i.e. the same force, how much work is done? Well, if I double my distance, I double my work. Which of these forces is doing zero work? That would be this one. All these others, this one's doing negative work, positive work, negative work. Uh, which of these is the unit for work? Well, force times displacement, that's kilogram meter per second squared times meter. Looks like B is the right answer for 25. And a guy pulls a five meter block, five meters across the floor is shown. What is the work done? Well, the only force that's in the x direction is this force, so that's going to be 30 cosine 60. So work is force in the x direction times x, 30 cosine 60 times x, which is 5 meters. Is uh, 75 joules. Right. And then C is the right answer here. All right, tough test. Uh, some tough questions. This is probably the hardest test all semester, maybe even all year. But you knew that going in. 
And uh, all right, let's stop there.